I am the Commissar. That's my name. Forged Alliance Forever. That's the game. Who have we got with a claim to fame? Today, two players, mano a mano, head to head, fighting it out in a 1v1 duel on the Bermuda Locket. It's quite a well-known map, and I'll talk about it in just a minute. But before I do, let's go and see who's involved in this little tussle. In the blue corner, we have Geralt of Rivia taking a break from his witching duties to put on this fetching UEF command suit and play in a fight. He is 1440 rated. And in the red corner, Yob Marine, who is 1391 rated, and he is playing Cybron. Now, the Bermuda Locket, decent amount of reclaim on the causeways, but look on these leaves of this clover. There is so much reclaim here. It is absolutely everywhere. And if we have a quick look at the player's starts, you'll see that they're doing what's quite common here and queuing up an awful lot of PGENs while sending several early engineers out to get all this lovely, delicious reclaim. And if we look at Yoba, I have no doubt we'll see, yeah, look at this. Lots of early reclaim engineers going out to grab the stuff. Mex is being built more slowly than you would expect, usually, and look how much power he's got up already. What does surprise me, though, is that Yoba hasn't got himself an air factory killed yet. Normally, we see drops coming out to here from the southern leaf and to here from the northern leaf, and possibly attempts to grab the other players leaves as well if somebody's feeling particularly aggressive and that really has to be done by drop but only now has Yoba even thought of an air factory and instead he's sending out a pair of labs one to this leaf and one to this leaf while that transport is already nearly done for Geralt so Geralt is likely to be a bit ahead in the dropping contest but perhaps Yoba is using all that mass he's going to be reclaiming to be a bit greedier. And while sure, he does have the eco lead at the moment, it's a little too early to start making points like that, wouldn't you agree? So out comes Geralt, and he's doing the classic shenanigan of dropping here. I think he's got enough on board there, because that is a fully loaded transport, which he's sensibly supporting with an Inti, just in case. Though he doesn't know that. And that's interesting. It looks like Yoba has gone for an Inti first, and a scout after, and isn't going for a transport until the third thing out of the factory. Anyway, what I was saying is that Geralt has dropped half the engines here and he's sending the others down to drop here. So he's setting up in both these positions at once. He'll want to get a decent number of factories down so that he can start reclaiming all this delicious mass in order to throw it into his coffers. But this is where Yoba's strategy of sending a lab might pay off. If he micros it well, he could kill these engines before they... But wow! Did you see that, my dudes? Did you see that? That lab wasn't my crowd. It ran straight past the NGs and in a blink, Geralt saw it, put out the reclaim order, and without even losing one engineer, he just ate it up. That was pretty amazing play from Geralt, I gotta say. And rather than come out here with his drop, as I expected him to, Yoba has chosen first to send his engineers here. Presumably he has seen his lab being killed here and thought, I need to defend here. I'm going to put some defense factories up and stop him getting around the causeway. Meanwhile, his comms just walked out to this causeway. And he is being slightly greedier with the eco. He has more mexes built as yet. But in total mass collected, he's also ahead. So... It's paying off for now, but with this amount of map control, will it continue to pay off? You've got a bomber out here, and we'll watch it in a moment, which Geralt seems to have missed. 
because Geralt is dropping over here with more engies, another triad of them. Ha ha. Because he's UEF, he can build triads. Are you laughing? Anyway, another triad of engineers has dropped here and hopefully he will be starting to produce with it soon. Meanwhile, on seeing that there's nothing headed out this way, the lab has headed up here while finally Yoba drops this expansion over here. This bomber, it's got a kill. It's about to get two more NG kills, so well, that's doing pretty well. And as yet, those fighters are still over here from Geralt and haven't got anything done. And this could be even more damage. Ouch, a triple NG kill brings that up to six kills and a veterancy for that bomber. And now Geralt realizes his issue and he sends a few inties to defend. This lab does get up here and this time it's slightly better micro to start shooting the engines at range but it's too late because as in the other expansion the first thing that Geralt did here was put up a T1PD that finished on time it shot the lab. And Geralt is bringing his com down here to set up position on this causeway. Meanwhile, he's got a decent amount of factory production here and he's swarming his spam across here, whereas Yoba only has one factory, soon to be two, against the one, two, three, four, five, six, seven, soon to be eight that Geralt has. And we'd also better mention the Navy. Now, Bermuda Locket is an interesting map in that it has an inner pool and an outer pool, and if you lose naval dominance on either, you could be in trouble. And there are three factories up already for Geralt, with three more queued up. And he's already got a frigate right the way over here. Whereas only one factory has been finished for Yoba. He's trying to build a sub, but this frigate could well deny it. And if Yoba is naval locked this early, what could he possibly do about it? Meanwhile, Geralt's troops that we mentioned a moment ago are swarming in here and I think he's just got enough to overwhelm these factories. Sure there are engineers trying to get reclaim duty down but he hasn't changed the priority on these factories and so it was just producing a scout there. This one produces a mantis but that's too little too late and Geralt is just going to swarm over here. Has Yoba got enough to stop it? That sub is going to get out and it will be able to kill that frigate because of course frigates can't shoot subs but I don't think it's going to kill the frigate in time to save this naval yard. And while that happens let's have a quick look at player ecos because this looks a bit suspicious to me. And I am not wrong, look up there. Yoba is power stalling hard and his mass is fluctuating so much because he's Commander just not attack. able to generate it. He's also pushing forward with his comma bit. We'll check on that in a moment. How is Geralt's eco? Well, Geralt's eco is or rather was so rubbish because he too was power stalling hard. He overtakes Yoba as he recovers his eco power wise, but only just. Though, so that was some pretty amazing power mismanagement from both players. But we need to go back to Observer View to have a look at this. So let's do that right away. So in pushes Geralt and PD is the order of the day for Yoba, but will that be enough? And is there and is there any arty? Yes, there is. There's arty in this force, which is liable to just you know sit back and pop away this PD. And while well, T2 PD would stop it, I don't think that either player has any tech of any. Na oh yeah. Oh, take that back. We do have T2 Air out for Yoba. Do we have any tech out for? Geralt. I don't see any. But Yoba really needs to be able to do something about that. And this must be a miskick. Look, these two mixes uncapped and quite far forward towards this spam are nearly at T3. If he gets those to T3 and loses those, that would be a huge investment lost. And also, you should never upgrade T3 before capping first. So that must, must have been a mistake. 
but it would stop him being behind in eco. Meanwhile, his comm looks just a little bit exposed here as the spam he brought up with it dies. He hasn't got any upgrades, so he's completely naked. And Geralt has five factories here and a point defense to fall back to and a sick factory coming up. So Yoba would be wise to fall back just a little bit. Meanwhile, though, he's not going to get Navy back on the inside. But he might on the outside. He's put up a naval factory there. We'll see what he does with it. And his PD and spam has been just enough to evict Geralt's first push. Though he's lost a mechs and a factory to Geralt in the process. As well as a decent amount of spam. Geralt also going for tech tool air at last. But as yet we haven't really seen anything apart from this desperately needed P gen for Yoba and with those T3 mexes which he's noticed and queued up the caps on he is now ahead in eco despite the fact that he's got only two and a half leaves to Geralt's five and Geralt is not letting up on the spam this is relentless but this gunship from Yoba will definitely be able to help out and that's an interesting play Yoba is going for T2 Navy on the outside. If he can, he can't do cruiser bombardment because he's Cybran. But if he were to suddenly surprise Geralt with a bunch of Salems, stir them around with a uh, mermaid around the outside here, and suddenly boom, naughty naughty, walkie walkie, into Geralt's space, that could pay off. But that would be a large eco investment. Mind you, with these T3 Mexes, he might just have that eco in order to achieve it. In comes more of the spam from Geralt and over here Yoba's trying a bit of a run by. Geralt is set up here and Yoba has just crept through here and is getting a wave of tanks into the causeway behind for Geralt but Geralt's comm is there, Geralt has PD there, he has spam production there, that's not going to be enough. and torpedo bombers being prepared for Yoba. Now a torpedo bomber might just pay off a bit but it feels like there's more inties in the air for Grout and torpedo bombers would have a slow time picking through this. I think he'd only really want to bother with them if he were, were under threat from T2 Navy like destroyers or cruisers from Grout. Which he might be soon, because that's a T2 naval yard on its way for Geralt. Spam fight going down over here. Yoba is rooted to the spot on an upgrade that he's about to finish and immediately has a Cerberus killed. And if he can just hold this spam back with his own spam long enough, then that Cerberus will make all the difference and Geralt won't be able to push in. So a good response from Yoba and Witcher going to do about it? Get it? Because Geralt of Rivia is the Witcher? <laughs> My word, I'm really on form today. Uh, I've got that silly icon hiding in the corner. We'll worry about that in a moment. So it looks like Yoba's torp got a bit of work done, and here comes another one. But I think it's going to get shut down quite quickly by these inties, and Geralt is just dropping NGs onto this leaf, whether for reclaim or for factory or for both, I don't know. But it's possible that he's busy microing over here, where he's having definite trouble against that Cerberus fire from Yoba. And so these NGs are sitting idle. and Yoba setting up a nice little firebase out of range of the T1 spam that Geralt has put up over here. Come on NGs, do something! You've dropped them there, don't forget them I do, don't forget them. And this T2 upgrade is ready for Yoba and he's already got a destroyer on the way. 
but to compare that game because there's already T2 Navy on the way for Geralt as well. And Yoba has been focusing a little more on Inties, but there's T1 anti-air in this spam force here. UEF cruisers, they aren't great at anti-air, but they're not cruisers. Cruisers are great at anti-air, obviously. UEF frigates are not great at anti-air, but they're not terrible either. And as you saw, that torque bomber just got popped out of the sky. So, Yoba's built a TML here, and it's got something killed, but not a great deal, only 200 mass. Did he shoot out these mexes, or was that his, um, his spam wave earlier? But that is definitely a change to look out for. Yopa on his way to T3 land, and thanks to those mexes, those T3 mexes that he upgraded and somehow hasn't lost to this push yet, he's still got an eco lead. It's only 10 per tick. Okay, make that 20. And Geralt has actually collected more mass over the course of the game, but all that aside, Yoba has an eco lead, despite his huge lack of map control. And to be fair, he is pushing Geralt off of this leaf of the clover here. He's taking out the factories, and those were some T2 support factories, so um, they were reasonably valuable to Geralt. There's a bit of T2 spam in there, but it's mainly Medusa. Now, Yoba could bring his com up here and start both reclaiming and fortifying this base to recapture it, but it doesn't look like he's choosing to do that just yet. We do have the destroyer out from Geralt, and maybe that's what Yoba's worried about. And that UEF cruiser is also going to be nice work, but over here, look at his choice of defense. None of this miserable T2 PD business of a Serb was trying to tickle the spam to death. Nope. He's cybering, he's gone full naughty naughty, walkie walkie, and this Salem is stomping its way up onto land on those silly insect legs as if he doesn't know he's supposed to be a boat, and he is defending, along with this big chunk of T1 PD, from the land with his cannon shooting into this horde of spam. And finally, these NGs have started doing their job and have reclaimed a lot of this mass here and have set up a factory. But this, this has got a lot of work done and Geralt has been pushed back not only from this leaf but from the causeway as well and these dudes are actually getting quite deep into the base of Geralt so, uh, but these are pushing so I think we need to get some split screen on. Let's do that. Down here we see Geralt pushing in and he is making a bit of headway but those T1 PDs in combination with the Salem's and indeed a gunship that just got shot. They're getting so much work done that he just hasn't got the fast power to break through and he falls back. And there are also rhinos heading out to join the support from Yoba, so a good defense. And on this side, it's also looking like it's gonna go Yoba's way because that's a T2 mex, two T2 mexes and a T1 mex that I think that Geralt will lose to this big horde of Medusa. And there are good ships coming in from Geralt, and there's only a little bit of T1 anti-air in there. So in the end, the gunships are going to deal with this, but not before Yoba's done a decent amount of damage. Down here in the south, those Salems are still trying to fire, and uh, since there's now more of them, but it's being blocked by the terrain, and Geralt is able to defend and cruise the fire. Cruise the fire is now coming from the ocean, down onto the base and it's also taken out Yoba's position on the causeway you can see up there but Yoba is pushing in not put off by these gunships he is getting his Medusa into this area belonging to Geralt and he is eating it up another T2 Mex goes down and Yoba now has a 40 mass lead over Geralt somehow this Destro not getting much done, it's just shooting into the wall, but this cruiser will succeed where the Destro fails. And the cruiser's also managing to hit these T3 mexes. If he can focus that, that would be pretty deadly. Geralt's pushing in a game though, and there are rhinos trying to stop it, but 
there's much more there now there are now pillars joining into the mix as well and supported by this death glow fire from outside where the assailants are focusing their shots it could be that the route will get work done up here Yova has been finally cleaned up by the gunship there's more coming in but that's a little while away so let's go back to single screen I know that it is hard to believe but somehow Yoba is holding down here in the south. He's got three Salems out now. His rhinos are just trickling in and dying. And he's still got a few point defences, though the cruiser of fire is dealing with those quite quickly. And since Salems are slow, the cruiser of fire could also be used to deal with the Salems. But Geralt's lost one of his destros, at least, to the fire from these Salems. There's its wreck. And he might be about to lose another. Well, these Salems have also sprouted eggs and come up on land, and I think this is going to be another hold for Yoba. Meanwhile, up here, in come the tanks again, and there's a little more in the way of Rhino in there, or was a little more in the way of Rhino in there. It's still mainly Medusa. In fact, is this now all Medusa coming up? I think it is. And what answer does the Medusa have to these gunships? Well, none. None whatsoever. So this could be quite a lot of waste from Yoba, but... We saw him going for T3 earlier, and there are now Loyalists mixed in there. He really needs flak to support them, or the Loyalists will die to the gunship, same as everything else. But, they're in there, and there are also Loyalists defending here, and though the Loyalists are dying, and you can see a few Loyalist corpses around there, he is slowly, slowly managing to drive Geralt back. The lawyers form up, the Salems form up, the destroyers are both dead for Geralt and the Salems from Yoba are doing their job and firing up here and Geralt's navy retreats. But these cruisers, they've cleaned up all of this eco here and yet Yoba is still ahead. I'm pretty sure Geralt isn't power still because look how much he's making, that's not fluctuating a lot. So, yeah, look, he's just not got many upgraded mechs. I mean, these are still T1 over here. Whereas, he lost one of his T3 mechs and it did set him back a bit, but... Yoba still has T3 mechs here, capped T2 mechs here. He's just been focusing on his eco, and he's actually doing a good job. These guys come in and, as we theorised, sure, the lawyer is tougher than the Medusae, but it still gets picked off by gunships, and that is a significant force of gunships that Geralt has. However, Yoba is on his way to Tech 3 Air. He will need an ion reactor, and I don't see any yet. And his T3 HQ is under cruiser fire, and what can he do about it? What's he going to do about this? I don't know. I think he's going to lose his T3 HQ and suddenly he's going to lose his ability to produce loyalists. Boom! He'll have to put up another one back here somewhere. And another push from the route. If at first you don't succeed, well, he has tried again and he's beginning to catch out these Salems. Many times have I pointed out that if a Salem is on land, it can easily be swarmed by spam, especially as it can't fire backwards. And that might be about to happen to this one right here. And those T1PDs, which have huge DPS for their cost, have been swarmed down apart from these two. That T3 Mex is gone. Yoba's still ahead though on Eco because he's got T3 Mexes back here now. This is amazing Eco from Yoba, given that he now only has a couple of... Well, I say, I say that he's got three to go out three now. He's sure he hasn't got this or this, but he's made sure that Geralt can't have either of them, and he's beginning to recapture this. And see, these are already up to T2. This is great eco management, but he's losing Mexes back here as well. So how long is it going to last? He and without the capacity to produce those T2 engineers, he's going to have a problem getting up. TMDs, but he's got the torpedo as well as nano on his com now and he's just walking into the water but that might have held up a little while ago but now there's a destro here and destro torps are pretty nice if he comes up he gets shot by the destro if he goes under he gets torped by the destro but it's only one destro 
and Cyber and Torp comms are pretty good and with the Nano he'll just be able to absorb the fire and the Death Throw's backing up Geralt is forced to cancel his air upgrade and Yoba is sinking those cruisers and these gunships can't do anything about it, the cruisers can't do anything about it because the comm is just under the water and I think I just saw the Destro going down. Nope, there's the Destro. The Destro is still up and about. And you will probably need to worry about that, but thanks to his Nano and two Vets and T2, he's got enough to just tank the fire from one Destro. Meanwhile, this is a very significant force we have massing over here. And while the Salem is taking pot shots at the naval portion of it, that's a lot of mobile missile launchers and a lot a lot of pillars and there isn't really any TMD here for Yoba to defend with and that death is nearly dead to the torps from Yoba's com torp bombers maybe well speak of the devil there are torp bombers coming in from Garout And Yoba, realising that he hasn't got an easy answer to talk bombers from underneath the water, walks out of the water. And he has got TMD over here, to be fair, so if he falls back, he'll be able to just hide behind the TMD and his comm will be safe from the cruisers. The gunships come in looking for the snipe, but there is flak here, and that's not a vast number of gunships. Flak tank, flak turret, another flak tank. And with the T2 and Nano and now four vets on him, thanks to all that work from the cruiser, Yoba barely takes even the tiniest scratch before all those gunships are dead. But he's lost those Salems, he's lost those Mexes, and yet more T1PD is the order of the day here. Ooh, that one's on an upgrade T3, and if he loses that, that will be a lot of eco down the drain, and I think he will lose it. Seven, ooh, that was a 72% upgraded T3 mechs, and he just lost it. That is painful. And yet, the story continues where Yoba is still ahead in eco. Now he's collected more total eco, thanks to that continuing eco lead. He's 20 per tick ahead. But there's just so much spam and it's getting ever closer to Yoba's main base. Yoba gets T3 air, it's here though and this could be under threat if this gets any closer. Does he have a T3 P gen? I don't think he does. I, yeah, he's got all of these T2 P gens but that's covering pretty much all of that and he doesn't have any T3. And in come all these pillars, and that is a lot of pillars. Not long ago, when we were watching that game on Forbidden Isle, we saw just how much damage a bunch of pillars can do if they get into your base. Pillars and Riptide in that case, but pillars are still capable of putting out a huge amount of firepower, and they're targeting his P-Gens. And that could be a good pick to stop him getting anything done with this air factory. We're just producing engineers, presumably to build PDs. But this is quite nice. These destroyers are, rather than coming in and trying to walk slowly across where they just wouldn't be able to catch up with the invading land armies, they're going around the back and meanwhile, this time supported by stealth, although he's let the stealth get foolishly rather ahead of the main army. Yoba has pushed in on Garout here again, and this time there's a decent amount of flak in here to support the lawyers, rhinos and medusae against the gunships, which he knows are probably kicking around somewhere. Actually, he, there were quite a lot lost here, so maybe they aren't anymore. Either way, it feels like this force will be enough to push back Garout yet again from his expansion here. Although there is a cruiser firing in there, and that might get work done, though it will of course have to be careful of the Loyalist's ability to deflect those shots 
straight back at the unit which fired them. Again, TMD, the order of the day, and those pillars have been cleared up by this vast amount of T1PD, although quite a lot of it's been lost, and Yob will have to worry about rebuilding it. He's again bringing Salem's in to come forward and defend, but this is a big army he's going to have to worry about. And I think now will be a good time to have a quick moment to look at the Ecos, because this army... Sure, it's nice, but it's, it's going to die towards PD. I don't think we need to worry about it. Let's look at the Ecos. Geralt, overspending a little there, but not too bad. And he is getting Reclaim in to fuel it. And I suspect that when he's finished these up, he's going to be able to repurpose his engineers and do a little better, so not bad. Yoba, amazing. That's perhaps a little too much to have in the bank, but he's not overflowing. He's keeping it roughly balanced. Somehow, despite all the pressure he was under in his base, he's got a perfectly balanced eco. That is really impressive. Anyway, back to see what everyone's doing in the overview. So down here, in the south, we have these loyalists trying to hold the line, and they're being backed up by Salem's from the water. But, is that going to be enough? It just doesn't look like it because that is a big swarm of pillars and in they come. Meanwhile the Air HQ is being targeted by fire from those cruisers and while TMDs are being put up that feels very much too little too late. Now I think that loyalists are the wrong choice for Yoba here because with this amount of T2 and with it being tough T2 like pillars rather than say blazes I think that he needs to be making bricks to shoot him down, but maybe he thinks he can't afford bricks, or maybe he's too reliant on the deflection from the Loyalists, which, to be honest, isn't that great. Against one cruiser, like 10 Loyalists, sure, but one lawyer against 10 cruisers, less good. However, don't forget these boys. They were sent around the top, and they're getting up there. And in combination with this force, they could actually do a bit of damage if they pushed in. So we will check back on them in a moment. And thanks to all the damage he's managed to inflict here, and the fact that he's had a chance to eco up over here, Geralt is actually ahead in eco. It's been a while since that was the case, and Yoba's still ahead in total eco collected, but Geralt's overtaken him in production. And his tanks are swarming into Yoba's base. Look how many of those PDs have been taken out and look how many more have been built behind them for Yoba to try and stop this everlasting swarm of pillars. These Salems are also having difficulty really getting shots in on them. I think they need to come onto land and indeed they do. There they are sprouting their legs. Naughty naughty walkie walkie. And the same is true up here. These Salems have come onto land and are firing through the crack in the rocks onto Geralt's base. And that might actually be quite a problem for Geralt. Though he is producing stingers here. I would like, that's, oh, that's, that's still T2 Air HQ. If he were at T3, then he would have some nice answers like broadswords would kill these quickly and Ravager turrets might also be a good defence, but he doesn't have access to either of those, and he's beginning to lose his power. So that could actually be a problem, and there's enough flak in here that those stingers are just dying, and these Salems are still up, though that one took enough damage that the cruiser far from over here was able to take it out still. This is hurting Geralt quite a bit. And he's trying the same defence that Yoba's trying over here, where and for Yoba, it's just about, just about working, but he's got T3 air to defend, and there isn't any flak here for Geralt, and Geralt's cruisers are a little too far away to stop this whaler from defending, and the same is not true up here, because this Salem, okay, this Salem is now getting stopped by that, um, that cliff, and he might need to worry about that, and it's just standing still, and it's going to die to cruiser fire. Yoba notices the problem, but I think he notices a bit too late. Indeed, he does get down goes that Salem. That will teach it a lesson for growing legs, won't it? 
and more spam from Yoba just trickling into the north but I don't think it's making much progress however these T1 bombers might if they can clear up all these point defenses then there'll be nothing much to stop that spam and a big wave of T1 spam can easily dodge the so fire and tactical missiles coming out from these cruisers a destroyer or two here might help go out if he puts them here and has them shooting up here and um, his comm, he could he could put gun on that and just walk out, and that's what T1, a gun comm could, we're in combination with these point defences, could deal with that, I think. Down here, one of those T3 pigeons is out, and the other is under cruiser fire, and despite the vast banks upon banks of TMD, some of it is getting through, though those cruisers have decided to refocus their fire over here, taking out TMDs, taking out mexes. And Yoba creeps ahead of Nico again. He's done damage here. Like that mix there, for example. And he's not neglecting his own eco. In fact, on the com, he's going for the Raz. That's only half done, and it's going slowly. But if he completes it, that will be a great advantage, as it also means he won't be quite so reliant on keeping these T3 pigeons alive in the face of all that cruiser fire. And he sends... Yes, indeed, he does. He sends another pair of destroyers, or at least one more destroyer, out round the back the spam creeps forward here and this is beginning to look just a little less safe and there's enough in here to stop easily these stingers that go out is popping out and sending in the direction of this force and the horde of medusa how many medusa is that 104 Medusa on the field for Yoba and they're all just swarming out from these factories swarming into the base of Garout and the Medusa can easily take out the point defense at range with just a alt right click order straight into there and this is where most of the power production for Garout is this is where most this is where his air HQ is so I think his land HQ, yeah, his land HQ is over here and is being heavily assisted. And let's just take a moment to appreciate this little yin-yang of spam going anti-clockwise around the locket. This destroyer has walked up here and the cruisers on their own don't have an answer to it. This destroyer can just creep forward, picking off the cruisers one at a time. And unless Garout comes up with an answer to that, this may be a problem. And with this TMD being rebuilt, with these point defences being rebuilt, this feels like an impregnable wall through which Garout doesn't quite have the ability to shoot yet. And if he got this up to T3 and put a battleship here, that could do it. But the cruisers on their own, I don't think are going to make it. And suddenly, this spam is breaking through. He has put a destroyer here and it is shooting. But there's enough to swarm past, and he's beginning to lose his actual eco in his base. Interceptors come in and take out his gunships. Med Medusa's fire and take out the turrets, and suddenly Yoba's in a much better position than Garout. Because Garout, he has more spam. He has so much more spam. But Yoba's eco is now vastly ahead of Garout's. 30 or 40 a tick at least, and you saw it jump up there as he reclaimed some and Yoba has the ability to produce this T3 land and in combination with all his turrets he can defend, he is defending and Garout doesn't Garout is losing to this spam getting into his base there's rhinos in there there's Medusa that Yoba should be ordering in and it feels like suddenly, suddenly it's all crumbling for Garout despite this army that he has here and this navy what can he do to come back? What is he going to do about it? As his army just smashes itself into Yoba's base without... And now come the Medusa. Now they're pushing in. And look at those pigeons going up in smoke. And... And Geralt resigns. That was quite a play from Yoba as both their main bases being attacked by hordes of spam from the other as they corkscrewed around the locket. Do you think that Garout resigned too early there? Do you think he could have solved it with just a little more destroyers in the middle, for example? Or a little more focus on land to defend his main base? I don't really like Yoba's play with all these turrets. 
I think he could have slacked her from the spam just a bit here and gone a bit harder here and crept Geralt back that way. But, I mean, who am I to disagree? It paid off and Geralt resigned. So, tell me what you thought about that. While you're down there, please don't forget to like, subscribe and obey. I am the Commissar and I will see you next time.